I'd never heard about Mormonism until a fellow named Mitt Romney decided to run for president. For Mitt Romney, it's a divine question that won't go away. What would it mean to have a devout Mormon in the White House? You don't drink. You don't never taken drugs. You don't smoke. I believe in my Mormon faith, and I endeavor to live by it. My faith is the faith of my fathers. I will be true to them and to my beliefs. Some believe that such a confession of my faith will sink my candidacy. If they're right, so be it. As North America began to learn about Mormonism, one idea was pushed again and again, family values. But this wasn't new for the LDS church. They'd been doing this for a very long time. Dad, will you please play ball with us? No, not right now, son. I gotta finish painting. I put it off way too long already. Son, let me show you how to swing that bat. Magic From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yo, Jimbo, you gonna join us tonight? Uh, gotta work on the house. Ouch, you're still working on that house. You ought to write a book about it. What could be more important than the game? A couple little things. Spend something on your family that shows them what they're worth. Very cool, Dad. Spend your time from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. On the LDS website, they introduce you to the church through a series of short videos. Seven, take one, mark. God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, agency, making mistakes, forgiveness, grace, Sabbath day, church, activities, miracles, joy. For the average Christian, they might not be able to recognize that this was produced by the LDS church, but can you blame them? Love, joy, peace, family values, serving others, that sounds like a good deal. So why are accusations that Mormonism is a cult so prevalent? Or why do people draw such a hard line between Orthodox Christianity and the LDS? The renowned evangelist Billy Graham brings our primary question to the table. Who art thou, Lord? Jesus Christ, are you who you say you are? This is the question that every one of you today are going to have to answer. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? This is the most important question we need to ask ourselves as we search for truth. In Islam, they understand Jesus to be a prophet. In Judaism, they understand him to be a rebellious rabbi. The Jewish point of view, where we don't believe in the divinity of Christ, I right. think that the, there you can make an argument that the the Gospels, which were written. He was just a prophet. And, right? Significant. No, no, no. We don't How even believe he was a prophet. What do you think he was? What do you guys I, think? I he mean, was? I, what, I, what do I think he was historically? I think he was a Jew who tried to lead a revolt against the Romans and got killed for his trouble. Just like a lot of other Jews at that time who were crucified for trying to lead revolts against the Roman and got killed for their trouble. But what has Christianity long taught about Jesus? Jesus always existed. He was not created. The second thing is that Jesus is God and he's part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The third thing is that Jesus came to this earth fully God and fully man to live the sinless life that we could not live and to die on the cross, the death we deserve to die, but he resurrected and ascended as the scriptures taught. There's much more you could say about Jesus, obviously, but let's begin here. The third point is often what Christians recognize as the gospel or good news. So the big question remains, do people within the LDS church believe the gospel and what the Bible says about Jesus? Hi, this is Alexa. May I know the purpose of your visit? We're missionaries and we're going around sharing uh, messages about the restored gospel of Jesus Christ and how that message can help us and our families grow closer to God. The restored gospel of Jesus Christ? What do they think happened to it? Us Christians have been preaching the good news of the gospel for 2,000 years. But according to LDS teaching, with the death of Jesus and eventually his disciples, Christianity broke out into full-scale apostasy. Enter Joseph Smith. Joseph loved the Bible and the teachings of Jesus, but he was confused by the conflicting opinions of the various churches. On a spring morning in 1820, Joseph went to a grove of trees near his family's farm to pray. Joseph said that as he prayed, I saw a pillar of light. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages. Joseph asked the Lord which church he should join. The Lord instructed him not to join any of them. Three years after the first vision, 
an angel visited Joseph and instructed him to unearth an ancient record hidden in a nearby hill, which Joseph translated by the power of God. This ancient record was the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. The Book of Mormon contains an account of God's dealings with the ancient inhabitants of the Americas, and Latter-day Saints believe it is Scripture another witness of Jesus Christ, along with the Bible. It doesn't take long to recognize that there are verses in the Book of Mormon that have been taken from the Bible and changed ever so slightly. Take a look at this well-known verse from Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Pretty standard. Now take a look at this section from the Book of Mormon. He said, for we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. This is a direct contradiction. Mormonism teaches a works-based salvation. Let's revisit what Mormons believe about Jesus. They teach that Jesus was just like us and is our greatest example in achieving Godhood. Many Mormons believe based on Mormon teaching that they too will become a God one day after they die. Lorenzo Snow, the church's fifth president, put it this way. As man now is, God once was. As God now is, man may become. So this is one of many reasons that Christians draw distinct lines in the sands between Orthodox Christianity and Latter-day Saints. We believe in different Jesus. The Mormon Jesus was created, is the spirit brother of Satan, and either didn't have the will or the power to save us on his own. He needed us to do all that we could do. Jesus said that whoever would believe in me would not perish but have eternal life. Mormons are not putting their trust in the right Jesus. They have a distorted picture of who he is. Isaiah 43.10 says, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. And Isaiah 44.6 says, I am the first and the last besides me. There is no God. Friends, the idea that you will become a God is a lie. It's a lie to distract you from the truth, the truth of our situation, that we are broken and sinful before a holy God, guilty. We have no power in and of ourselves to save ourselves, but God in his mercy sent Jesus, fully God and fully man, without sin. He was with God in the beginning, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Jesus came to this earth to live the sinless life that we could not live and he died on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God. We didn't contribute anything to our salvation, but God in his mercy saved us. The LDS Church put such a burden on their congregants to be good enough to go to heaven. But which one of us can be good enough? Which one of us can be righteous enough to earn the favor of the God of the universe? That is a heavy load that you no longer need to carry. In Christ, there is so much rest and there is so much grace available through him. Come to him. It's not too late.